Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who actually attended the clinic today, um, suffering from bilateral, fully occluding and impacted earwax. And this left ear was the worst ear at the two. And the symptoms they were experiencing with this impaction was not, not only reduced hearing, they're really, really, uh, they actually emailed in um, first thing this morning they, and they mentioned that the hearing was non-existent really in both ears. But also they developed tinnitus. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know what tinnitus is, tinnitus is um, any sound really that originates from within inside your ears or your head. So it's not an external sound that you're hearing. And people describe tinnitus in different ways. Um, the most common uh, experience of tinnitus, people describe it as being a ringing or a buzzing or a hissing noise. But I've had patients describe it com in completely different. And that's because tinnitus is very um, subjective and unique. Uh, it, it can be any type of sound. People, Some people get tapping tinnitus, so it's more rhythmic. Now, um, they explained that they developed their tinnitus just recently. So we're hoping it was due to the earwax and nothing else. So it was a really, really uh, quite a difficult case, actually. So they had this kind of uh, upwards, um, higher than normal trajectory ear canal. So the normal uh, our ear canals are bendy and they also, uh, uh, particularly at the entrance, they do rise up slightly as this upwards incline, around 32 degrees, the average on an adult. So I'll say this is probably a bit more. There's a few hairs at the entrance of the ear canal as well, which sometimes can make it a bit tricky. And they had quite a bendy ear canal, so the ear canal in the left side of ears off to the left. Now, I initially uh, used microsuction. Um, it was pretty obvious from, from the offset that that wasn't going to really be too helpful. Um, so then I'm using a, a combination of an ear pick, forceps here now. At this stage, the patient symptoms actually improved massively. Um, as I brought this plug forwards with the ear pick, even I could feel the pressure relieve. It was almost like when you um, open a can of Coke uh, or a bottle of Coke, should I say, when you, when you turn the cap and you feel that pressure release. It was really odd, but I felt it and the patient felt it when I brought this forwards. But I explained to the patient that this plug is actually... Um, much larger in diameter than this section of the ear canal so we're now having to bring it through and because the wax was pretty solid and hard it was it's quite tough so it kept it got lodged here just just past the second bend now the forceps actually didn't really do much on that occasion it in fact probably pushed it back in a bit so now i'm using this ear pick it's, it's a really really sharp instrument um and i'm just using it trying to get it underneath and you may have seen there as i was trying to um, embed the tip of the, the the pick into the core of the wax it kind of dissected through and that pick um, had to keep control of it because otherwise it would have just gone straight into the side wall of the ear canal and that's the danger we're using these um, kind of sharp metal instruments but sometimes they're required so you just gotta be careful like this so when i'm into it and when i'm bringing it through um, the, the pick can just break through the wax and then you've got all that all that momentum going to the side of the ear canals so i've managed to get the saint bart's ear hook in here and it worked actually a bit better i got in a bit deeper and because of the, the angulation of it it was uh, probably a better choice um so we managed to get that hook out we're just going to go back in and just mop up around so guys i'm looking for some volunteers um there was someone on Facebook, actually, who um, said that they were able to do this in two days training. So um, I've offered them the opportunity. I'll pay for their training so um, they can do it over the weekend. And by Monday, I've got a clinic. So but um, if anyone wants to volunteer, there is we can. Um, I've, the offer is genuine if, if this lady wants to take me off on it. Um, but, yeah, they seem to think that they can do what I do in a couple of days training with all these instruments picks and uh, forceps and ear hooks and corrects and so yeah uh, do let me know uh, feel free and we can hopefully get something arranged so anyway obviously that's a silly talk from that person um, but uh, just to keep you guys updated on what's going on with my um, quest of um, it's going to be difficult getting the regulation changed in the UK I mean uh, I've spoken to ENT they've, they've brought this to the um, uh, to the House of Parliament um, in the UK without any success. So um, obviously we can keep. Doesn't mean 
still don't fight the good fight, but my main priority is to make sure that one of our membership bodies don't endorse such practices because they currently are. So that that's my main objective. And um, so I did a poll. Now, of course, it's not fully scientific. Uh, there's loads of biases because this poll was done on my LinkedIn page, my professional network, and it was aimed at um, members of this professional um, body. Um, so these are specialists like myself to ask them if they were in favour of people with no previous ear experience or qualifications getting trained in earwax removal. Um, uh, now, the membership apparently is 1,800 people, um, but looking at past polls and surveys, um, the, the, the only one really where the, the membership body has disclosed the number of votes was around... I've rounded off to 400. Um so I managed to get 127 votes, I think, which is probably not bad going because it's literally, I don't have access to the whole membership. It's just on my LinkedIn. Now, the results came back that 95% of the respondents to the survey uh, are not in favour of this practice. Um, uh, 5% were. Um, and... Um, now, as I said, there are biases involved. Now, I've been really pushing this matter in recent days. So obviously, there's a thing called researcher bias. So the poll, I was the author of the poll, so people may be influenced by that. People who m wanted to vote yes, that they are in favour, they may not have felt comfortable to, because with the LinkedIn polls, the author is able to see um, the votes being cast, whose capacity, obviously, I'm not going to disclose that to anyone, but... Um, they may not have felt comfortable. So I totally respect that. I totally get that. It could be that, obviously, my connections on LinkedIn are people who I, ha I share similar views with as well. So, um, However, that doesn't disguise the fact that um, we had about, I forgot, I think it was 116 or something um, votes um, completely against this. Now, if this poll that the membership body did, whereby they said three quarters of respondents to a poll were in favour um, of people with no experience, etc., uh, who go on one of their accredited courses, which is like two days, um, to be on the register that they're looking to do. It's called an oral care register. They said three quarters of response to that poll um, said they're in favour. But I've already got... Um, so three quarters of it. So imagine if 400 people did that, did that poll... Um, so three quarters would be 300. The other quarter that opposed it would be 100. I've already got 100 in, in excess of 100 people who said they're not, um, uh, would not be happy with these practices. So again, it's a bit of loggerheads with the membership body, given the question slightly different. But the, uh, I feel then um, that the membership body actually asked the wrong question. So I've asked them to make a public um, um, statement on the matter. Um, I think it's only fair because I've had... 3.2 thousand votes from the members of the public like yourselves and 92 percent of you said you're not happy uh, with people getting trained within two days have got no previous experience so i've put that to them i've had multiple ent consultants who um, are completely against this idea we've got other membership bodies who are also against this idea and i've done my own poll despite its limitations which at least deserve these um, plans to be withdrawn and then a full independence poll being conducted by the membership body to its members, asking the correct questions. Now, I actually found um, that poll that they did, and they didn't explain what they meant when they said... And, uh, so they're using this term, um, uh, an earwax practitioner or ear care practitioner and associate wax member, but they didn't define it. They didn't say that this could be anyone without any experience um, who can go. And one of the courses that they accredit, they're accrediting these courses... Uh, we've got proof of that so they can't even they can't refute that um, with two days training they didn't define that to to, to the members in the poll um, so I've got the poll I've got the accompanying email so people who, who may have voted for that are just not aware of what they were actually voting for what does this actually mean of course that you could argue raise the question well why do they vote uh, which is, is a good point so in any case it needs to be scrapped for now these these plans it needs to be redrawn um and hopefully we'll get a response, an official statement from them on Monday. We should, we should, we should hope and see. So clear the right side again. We use the combination of all the instruments there. 
Patient's eardrums were slightly retracted both sides, but I did the pressure test, tympanometry, and the, uh, the middle ear pressure was fine, so there's nothing to be worried about. They're the two wax plugs. There's all the instruments that we use, guys. Uh, four sets, bottom left, top left, ear hook, uh, suction probe, bottom right, and the ear pick, top right. So you can see they are very sharp instruments. Take care, guys. Look after yourselves and speak soon. Bye.